So here I have some built hammer touch on, which is quite an interesting product and there are actually a few different ways you can use this. So I'm gonna be taking you through some different application methods, how I got on with it and looking at the water behavior and durability as well. So in order to prepare this car, what I did was pre-washed it using built hammer touchless, which is designed to kind of go as a pairing with this product. So I use that at a 3% panel impact ratio before using the first application method. So the first way that you can actually use the products is to use it in your normal contact wash. So this involves putting a 30ml sachet into 15 litres of water. I'm using this car here to demonstrate a few different application methods. So I didn't want to use a full sachet in 15 litres as it would have been a little bit of a waste. So I've got here this sort of 5 litre bucket. So I'm going to be putting 10ml of the sachet into this. So as you can see here, when you spray the pressure washer in the bucket, it does foam up reasonably well. However, those suds die within a couple of minutes really, and especially when you hit the panel. The products in a bucket did actually feel pretty slick. It wasn't a sudsy product, but suds don't equal slickness. So I'm glad that it did still have a slick element to it. But I do generally prefer shampoos which are more sudsy as it allows you to see where you've been a little bit easier. So I didn't rinse the products off straight away, I just left it a couple of minutes just to sit on there as long as possible and there was no risk of it drying out in these temperatures. When I did rinse the products off, the water behaviour was decent, there was some sheeting but it was pretty weak to be honest. For me, I like the water behaviour to be quite strong and for sheeting to happen quite rapidly. There was definitely protection on here but not really to the performance that I would like. So I think this method would probably work better for topping up future applications rather than using it on a really flat panel to begin with. So I'm going to start with my first little bit of a gripe with the product, so a little bit of a criticism. So what it says to do is to put 30 millilitres, so a full sachet, in your foam lance and then the instructions are to top it up with water. Now, how much water you put in is a little bit left to interpretation. Most foam are a litre, so you can probably assume that that's what they mean. However, there are some foam which aren't, and also you don't need a full litre to cover an entire car. So realistically, to cover most cars, you only need about 500ml in your foam months to cover the entire vehicle. So if you do want to do that and you don't want to waste a full 30ml sachet, then you've sort of got to maybe pour half of it out, and it just seems a little bit messy, so I would prefer it personally to be in a bottle and make my life a little bit easier. So what I did actually here was measure out 10 millilitres of the product and then put it into 330 millilitres of water to bring us to a similar sort of dilution. So here you can see the water behaviour again on the other side before I use the foam months method and it is very very flat. So I applied the products using that dilution ratio and it does produce a pretty thin foam which isn't really a problem. When you apply it though you notice it does slip off quite quickly pretty similar to the snow foams from this manufacturer as well but you can see beading happen pretty instantly. I again left the product to dwell for a few minutes the instructions don't say you have to do this but I did want to give it a little bit more of a chance to stick on there as much as possible. After a few minutes so the product had entirely slipped off the vehicle so I was ready to give it a rinse. Using this method the water behaviour was miles better this is definitely more what I'd be looking for really pretty quick sheeting and some good beads as well so I was really happy with this method of application. It's worth noting as well that all the windows on this car are coated, so try not to look at that too much. It will have topped up that a little bit, but I'm not really sure of the level of protection it would have left had there been no protection on the windows. It's good practice when using any snow foam, but particularly when using a product like this, it's a good idea to really rinse through your foam cannon afterwards with clean water to make sure that any product residue doesn't dry up and sort of clog up your snow foam cannon. So another method you can actually use to apply the product is by using a sprayer. So you can use it in a trigger spray or here I've got a pump sprayer which makes life a lot easier if you're applying this volume of product to a car. Now this again brings me to a little bit of a gripe, but similar to the last one. It does say on the instructions you can use it in this method in a sprayer. If you don't have a foam lance, of course that's going to be your only option. However, what it doesn't say is anything about dilution ratios here. So the last one said 30ml and top it up with water, which gave you a little bit of an indication and you could kind of work it out. But just saying use it in a pump sprayer, I don't think is entirely helpful. So when you apply something you're using your foam lance, what you actually apply in a tank isn't what's hitting the panel. It's going to be diluted through your pressure washer. So for my particular setup, 
it gets diluted around 10 times. So I considered using it in the pump spray a very, very dilute to kind of match what it would be in the foam months, but then I thought, that's probably not showing you too much. So what I actually did instead was apply the product using the same actual dilution as you would in the foam cannon. So it's not gonna get diluted through the pressure washer and it's essentially gonna be 10 times more concentrated. So in this instance, I used 10 mil into 300 mil of water. So I used the same method as with the snow foam cannon and just sprayed it all over liberally and then left it for just a few minutes before rinsing off. When using this method, it didn't slip off nearly as quickly but when I rinsed it off, the water behaviour was very, very similar. And despite being around 10 times more concentrated when it was hitting the panel compared to the foam cannon, it didn't really seem to make much of a difference with the water behaviour. And I wouldn't say it was any stronger by over concentrating it. Just to confirm this, I did do a split test on the bonnet just to see what they were like comparatively. And again, I couldn't really notice any difference between the two sides. Although I did use a product at a quite high concentration on the panel here, I didn't have any issues with the product streaking or spotting, although I still would be cautious of using this product, no matter what method you are using, on a warmer day, just to avoid any of the product's residue drying up. Unfortunately, sunset did creep up on me a little bit here, and it also did start raining pretty much straight after I dried the car, so I couldn't get any good shots of the gloss. But there are some shots here of another car that I have coated with this product, so using the foam lance method. And you can see that it does look pretty glossy. I don't know how much of a difference this product actually makes in terms of gloss, but the car does have a nice finish and it's probably what I would expect from most sort of waxes and sealants really. So on the packets, it does say that you shouldn't apply this product any more than once per month. So I'm back now a month later. The car does have a decent amount of traffic film now, so I'm gonna give it a wash and then we can see how the product's performing underneath. So I just have a few clips to show you here where I'm rinsing the car down before applying any pre-wash chemicals and you can see that a lot of the traffic film was lifted quite easily from the vehicle here which is definitely a good sign. The wash behaviour was very flat on the sections that did have a lot of road film on there however for the sections that weren't affected the wash behaviour was actually looking really strong here. So before I moved on to the contact wash, I did use Built Hamber Touch Less at a 4% panel impact ratio and gave it 5 minutes to dwell before rinsing off. You can see on the rinse stage here that there's a little bit of life brought back into the sections where the water behaviour was very dull. But it definitely did need a decent contact wash to be able to remove that final layer of grime so that the water behaviour would come back a bit more. So I split the car in half and contact wash one side of it and the bonnet using Simple Wax Suds which is a pH neutral pure shampoo to avoid any interference with that protection. On the rinse stage here you can see that the water behaviour had dulled a fair bit. Once the product had been properly rinsed, you could see that there was still water behaviour there. It was just definitely a lot flatter and the sheeting was a lot slower compared to the initial application. If this was my car, I would definitely want to be applying something fresh at this stage to make sure the car was a little bit more well protected. So on the other half of the car, I dispensed the full 30ml sachet of Touch On into 15 litres of water and then contact washed the other half of the car using this method. And you can see here what the experience is like again using this product. It really doesn't produce many suds at all and it is a bit of a weird experience washing with it. But you can see it almost leaving a slight film on the surface where it is adding that protection. And there's just a quick shot of the bucket after half the car. You can see that the suds have died. So onto the rinse stage here, and I think the water behaviour was a touch better on this side in comparison to the other side where I just washed it with the pH neutral pure shampoo. The water sheeting was a bit faster, but not 
massive sort of dramatic difference. And just to show a bit of a comparison on the bonnet, I went over half of the bonnet again with that built amber touch on. So you can see on the right hand side is the section that just was washed with the neutral shampoo. And on the left was the side that was washed with touch on. And there isn't really much difference on this kind of panel where there already was some water behavior here. It was more on the very lower sections where the water behavior was dead. But I noticed a little bit more of a difference. Unfortunately, when using Touch On in the bucket, it wasn't capable of reviving the water behaviour to the same level after that initial foam sealant application, but it's definitely not worlds apart. So I do think if you are pushed for time, then using Built Hamber Touch On in this method in the bucket to revive a little bit of the water behaviour, as long as it's not totally dead, is a decent way to make sure the protection is topped up a little bit. So my favourite way of applying a product is by using it in a foam lance. It's the quickest and easiest method that I've found and also does offer very solid water behaviour. I'm not a huge fan of using it in the bucket because I don't think it feels as nice as a normal shampoo and the water behaviour just isn't as good. Having said that, I do think that using it in a bucket does still have its place. I have actually recommended the product recently to someone who wants to wash their car every four to six weeks and just wants it to be sort of reasonably protected but without putting a load of effort into it so I've recommended that they just use this in the bucket and they also have a pump sprayer so if they notice that the water behaviour isn't as good as they'd like it and it's died a little bit since the previous wash then what they can do is just go around and put that product in the pump sprayer and get that really sort of highest level performance the same as you do in a foam cannon. If you have enjoyed this review don't forget to drop it a like, subscribe if you're not already and you do like videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.